everyone and welcome back to The Stitchery. So a little bit ago I released a video about my first exploration of needle lace and all the different ways that you can use it and I will link that video right up here in the corner. And of course I mentioned then that I had done a deep dive of research on needle lace styles from around the world. So today we are revisiting needle lace in a whole new way, a whole new world of ways. At first I thought I would just be doing a few quick experiments but as it turns out I found an art style that I kind of like more than embroidery. So stay tuned to find out which one has me head over heels. As before, I'll just throw this fun disclaimer in there. I have no idea what I'm doing. I can't claim this as a tutorial. I'm not trying to make it that. This is my first time trying all of this stuff, but I want to give you some history and origin, all the things that I was able to research and then walk you through the process and let you know what I found to be really fun, what I found to be more difficult. So maybe you'll be inspired to do a little research and try something new of your own. I'll be linking all of the places where I got my research done in the description below so that you can do some further reading or find out how to do these for yourself. And if you're a master of any of these styles or you just know way more about them than I was able to find out, please tell me all about it in the comments. Like, seriously, please. These were not easy to research and more info would be great. All right, let's explore. The first specific needle lace style I found is from Romania. This is what really got me going nuts about needle lace and the different ways to do it. There's a great embroidery channel that has several tutorials for Romanian needle lace, so I'll link that in the description if you want to explore this technique more. There's many different styles of Romanian lace, but the one I'm looking at is specifically done with a needle and thread. It's similar to Battenberg lace in that it uses a tape as the base outline of the lace, kind of like I used a cordonette to form the base of my needle lace in the last video. The difference is that Romanian needle lace uses a handmade crocheted cord rather than a machine made tape. Because this outline cord is pretty thick and sturdy, the lace as a whole is rather stable and less delicate than some other forms of lace. Of course, this means the first step to me trying out Romanian needle lace is learning to crochet the outer cord. I'm gonna pause on that step for a minute and do a little cheat version like I did for practice last time. On Melina's channel, there are a lot of tutorials for Romanian needle lace that are done attached to fabric, not intended to be lifted off. This is a good way for me to try out their style of stitching and weaving, so I'm gonna start there. And why I keep freehanding flowers when I am clearly terrible at symmetry is beyond me. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. And oh look, a neat symmetrical flower definitely didn't have to trace that. First, to replace the cording, she uses a stitch I didn't recognize, although the more I'm stitching it, the more it seems similar to Palestrina stitch. It's anchored with a chain stitch, and then it's just a small straight stitch with a double knot wrapped around it, done closely together down the outline. This was pretty fast and easy, took me maybe 10 to 15 minutes to do my first petal here. I'm also realizing that you could pretty much use any outline stitch, since the inside part doesn't have to be anchored to it. But I think she uses this Palestrina stitch because it looks the most like the traditional crocheted cord. Next comes the actual lace part, which reminds me of weaving, but in a new way that I've never done before. For this particular petal pattern, cause you know I'm gonna have to try different patterns on every petal. We need a base across the bottom first, then the first layers of weaving, the vertical threads, come through the baseline here and into the outer cording. I'm already getting the picture that if this were the real cording and I was going to lift this off the fabric at the end, the thread would be looping around the cord rather than going through the fabric. Also, I definitely made my knots on this outline stitch too tight because I cannot get my needle back through most of them. Good thing this is practice. Next, we come up at the bottom side and start weaving the thread through those vertical stitches to make a pattern. This one is just a simple triangular look, so after several times through, I'll start leaving out the very outer threads, then keep narrowing it up to the top. Again, since this one is staying on the fabric, I just went back down through the fabric at the end. I'm interested to see how you finish it off if it's a true lace piece. 
and that's it for the first pedal. Super simple, didn't take too long, and I didn't really run into any issues. So I'm going to try out four other styles on the other pedals and see if there's anything that stands out to me as extra awesome or not so cool. I started by doing the outline stitch all the way around, and then I tried out three more of Melina's tutorials. Now I'm the kind of person that likes to have a really solid and specific research, like names for every type of weave or stitch here, but as there's little info in English out there, I'm getting a more general sense of the style instead. Basically, it looks like there's two main styles of weaving, either starting with horizontal rows across your shape, or with vertical rows that splay out from the center, and then various ways to weave your next set of threads through. There's some that's sort of a raised chain, plenty of the famous blanket and buttonhole or Brussels stitch or whatever you want to call it, and sometimes just some general looping or back and forth weaving. Creating the varied patterns is all about which threads you put in or leave out and how you shift your woven threads. So on the last petal here, I'm going off on my own, just trying to use what I've learned of the general technique to make my own woven pattern. I'm going to start with horizontal threads and then just sort of loop my weaving through them and see what happens. Not bad if I do say so myself. I ended up with not a lot of the woven stuff, so more of the grid threads are showing, but I like the overall look of it. I can definitely see how you could get really creative with this style, and as a huge fan of weaving, that's something I would love to do. Now it's time to do it the real way. And uh, <laughs> the first and last time I crocheted anything was probably like fourth or fifth grade when we learned it in some class, I can't even remember. And yet for some reason I already have a crochet hook, so that's helpful. Time to find out if I have any natural skills in this area. Spoiler alert, nope. So this part was just sadly hilarious. I had to watch a couple different tutorials, and of course I'm not helping myself here with the tools I have. This is crochet thread, but it's definitely not the right size for the hook that I have. I ended up switching to a giant yarn I have on hand just to get the basic start down, but eventually I figured out the pattern for this specific kind of cord. The beginning looks rough, and I think my biggest struggle was keeping the stitches, are they called stitches or knots when crochet? I don't know. Keeping them loose. They instantly tightened up on me and there was no going back. In the end, I got a decent length of crocheted cord, so I'm calling this a win and accepting that crochet is not the art for me. Let's see if this gets any better as I go. I've seen a lot of tutorials where they just pin this cord to a paper with the pattern drawn on, but I'm going to go ahead and tack it to fabric like I did with the cordonette. It seems like it shouldn't need too many tack points since it's a pretty solid cord. Then I'm going to do the vertical lace style, splaying out from the center, and instantly I'm running into issues here. It definitely did need more tack points, and the bottom here is just a massive mess of threads now. I'll admit, I'm kind of phoning it in after all that time crocheting the cord, so this one's going to be a less pristine practice session. But honestly, I'm just trying these out anyway, so I'll do my best with the willpower and interest I have left. I'm going with one of the designs I tried before. It's just a series of weaving stitches done in smaller and smaller sections on each half of the petal. And it could be worse? Yeah, so final takeaways here are that I really like the concept of Romanian needle lace. I love the way they weave the threads and the patterns that can be created. I'm just not personally a huge fan of the crocheted cord. Or rather, I love the look of the cord, I just didn't love making it myself. But this is only the first version of needle lace I've discovered, so it's time to move on to another country. Next, I found a specific needle lace style from Armenia, and it's quite different than what I've been doing so far. I was instantly attracted to this art by the simplicity of its materials. All you need is a needle and thread and some scissors to cut it. 
There are not a lot of books or tutorials out there on Arminian Needle Lace, but I found a lovely woman on YouTube who shares tons of tutorials, so I'm linking her channel in the description if you're interested in learning how to do this yourself. I started with her eight-part lace piece for beginners, and it was a little tricky at first, so I started over a few times just to clean up my work. But once I got the method down, it became such a relaxing thing to work on. All you have to do is cut a length of thread, I'm using crochet thread since it seems to be pretty sturdy, and thread your needle. Then you wrap the end of the thread around your finger and start making what is basically a buttonhole stitch over and over again. These turn into little petals that form the center of your circle, and then you continue adding more stitches in rows around the circle to make it bigger and bigger, bringing in a couple different kind of stitches as you go. The most challenging part of this was forming the very center of the piece, just because there's not a lot for you to hold on to yet. I also found that it took some practice to make your stitches or petals evenly sized, but by the end of this first piece, I was already getting way better at that. I started a second piece using the same beginner pattern and then went rogue after a few steps. It's so easy to use the main two or three stitches to play around with your own pattern. So final thoughts on Arminian Needle Lace? I love it. It's super relaxing, takes only a few supplies, making it really easy to take with you in the car, and it really only takes a couple of specific stitches to be free enough to make your own designs. I'm definitely going to be watching a lot more of Ashley's tutorials over on Become Inspired so that I can learn new stitches and patterns. If you're interested in a more thorough look into Arminian Needle Lace for beginners, let me know in the comments and I can explore this art again in another video. After finding Romanian and Armenian needle lace, I did a lot more digging to see what other countries had specific styles out there. I found that Croatia has a style they call Pag, apparently because it comes from an island called Pag. It was a lot harder to find info on this style, which is why I'm not going to personally try it out. But basically, it looks like they couch an outline of threads onto a hard backing, sort of similar to the first style of needle lace I tried, but far more intricate. Then they start weaving geometric shapes, usually with no pattern to guide them, out of tiny buttonhole stitches using a small pillow underneath and sewing on their laps. These pieces are exceptionally intricate, so yeah, I'm going to settle for just reading about this style and move on. I'll link the site where I got these images and info in the description if you would like to read more, as well as a video that shows some pag being made at the beginning. Turkish needle lace, called Inyi Olyari, please forgive that pronunciation, is actually almost the same thing, at its core at least, as Arminian needle lace. They both use a simple needle and thread, making the same style of knots or buttonhole stitches to create patterns free of any backing. The Turkish version, though, seems to be mostly used as edging on garments, rather than made into the familiar doily sort of round lace pieces that seems more common in Armenia. I also found that a lot of people make little standalone lace pieces in Turkey, often in the shape of flowers, and these are so well done and so specific specifically done, I suppose, that they can be bent and shaped as though there's wire in them. Overall, it looked like they use a lot more colors, a lot more motifs or recognizable floral patterns in theirs, and I did read that traditionally their lace holds a lot of meanings depending on the specific design. I also noticed, in my somewhat limited research, that they seem to utilize a double knot far more than the buttonhole stitch I was using for the Arminian needle lace, and I'm just guessing at these stitch titles according to what they remind me of. While I don't have anything to edge, I thought I'd go ahead and try out a few of the more Turkish stitch styles and patterns on a new piece. I couldn't find any English language tutorials on this style, so I'm just kind of winging it off of the videos I watched. I had this piece already started in the Armenian style, so first I added a row of double knots to it, which you can see here by the bulkier knot size. Those definitely add some structure and stability to a piece, but you have to be sure you like where they are going before tightening them because they do not come undone as easily. Then I tried this back and forth pattern I saw in a tutorial that creates a little triangle or mountain. It reminds me of the corded Brussels stitch in the first needle lace piece I did, because you create a straight line of thread by going back to your starting point, and that makes the whole area look a little tighter or more filled in. Adding these new stitch styles or patterns, even though they are still basically the same techniques as I learned for Arminian Needle Lace, really opens up a bunch of new possibilities. I'm starting a second piece from scratch now, using the double knots as a base, rather than the larger petals in the center I've done before. This instantly changes the look. Now I have a little five-pointed star-like flower as my base, instead of the more daisy-looking dozen petals. For now, I'm just going to keep adding double knots and see where it takes me. and it's taken me into a bit of a rose shape. Not really sure where to go from here, but I'm going to check out a few more tutorials, get some inspiration, and come back with a more final piece.
This is where I'm going to finish this one. I really like the overall look. After getting some inspiration from photos and tutorials of some gorgeous Turkish pieces, I decided to try out some of the pyramid structures and quite honestly, totally messed up the first two. I did not come in with a proper plan in mind for this pattern, and because you want to keep using one piece of thread and not constantly be casting on new pieces, you have to know where you're going to be at the end of each stitch. Kind of like if you've ever tried to do one of those drawings where you never lift the pencil off the paper. You can see here where I just completely completely left a petal off. Whoops. By the third one, I had figured out the pattern much better, and yeah, I think they look pretty decent. I'm loving the snowflake shape and the bigger open sections in the middle. It's all just a little different than the Arminian style, and I think that's really interesting. They are basically the same technique for lace making, and yet they can end up being so distinct from each other. Moving over to the British Isles, my research took me to a type of lace from Ireland, commonly called limerick lace. This one definitely reminded me more of actual embroidery, especially now that embroidering on tulle and other see-through fabrics is becoming more popular. Technically, limerick lace encompasses both tambour and needle run lace, the former which uses a hook to draw threads through the net or tulle in a chain stitch, and the latter of which uses a needle to do various stitch types. There is another style of lace from Ireland called Carrick Macross lace, which is also done on tulle or netting. But for this one, you use a thin piece of fabric like organdy on top of the tulle. They outline the shape they're making, then cut away the extra organdy so you get these sections of filled in or more translucent fabric on top of the areas of straight up tulle. And these are certainly not all the types of needle lace out there. In Italy, the cutwork style of reticella lace led to punto in aria, which is apparently considered to be the first true lace that is stitched or woven from scratch rather than by removing threads from a piece of fabric as in reticella. Italians also came up with point G venice, which used floral motifs instead of geometric designs, and it was so highly desired that it led directly to the French creating Boing de France. Not even kidding, the French literally like bribed Venetian needleworkers to leave Italy and come to France to teach them how to make this lace, and it was taken so seriously that defection was punishable by death. Dang, why don't we still treat the textile arts like they are this big of a deal? Anyway, after that, France tweaked the Venetian method and called it Alençon lace. Hungary has Halles lace, Belgium has has point gigas. I am probably pronouncing all of these incorrectly. Basically, what I learned here is that making lace with a needle and thread is a very European tradition, particularly popular in the Eastern European regions. It looks like Europe is specifically where lace in general originated, with needle and bobbin made styles sort of going head to head over time. I did some digging on whether Asian, African, or South American nations had any specific needle lace styles of their own, but I did not find a lot of info, and what I did find was all about bobbin lace. If you know anything about lace making and particularly the prevalence of needle lace techniques outside of Europe, I would love to hear about it. So my final thoughts on needle lace, it is a true textile art. This stuff is intricate, it's varied, it is stunningly beautiful, and I can really understand why a lot of the styles are protected or recognized as like a national art form for their countries or their regions. I came into this exploration thinking that needle lace was really just a different kind of embroidery or a different take on embroidery, and in the end, I must say, Embroidery is way easier than needle lace. Sometimes. Most times. I'm definitely planning to dive a little deeper into specific stitches and patterns, work it into my embroidery pieces, and keep exploring more Armenian and Turkish needle lace styles because those were so beautiful and such a joy to work on. Truly relaxing, easy to take with you anywhere you're going, great to just pick up when you're tired at night and watching TV. Loved them. Yeah, this piece just keeps getting bigger. I hope you've enjoyed watching me stumble through totally new stuff. I know I've learned a lot and I'd like to think you have too. If there's anything else you'd like to see me explore, please not crocheting, do let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.